Okay, my friends, so if you can believe your data is roughly symmetric, unimodal, otherwise known as bell-shaped, the standard deviation can be used to do something pretty powerful um, with respect to where data is on the graph. So what I'm going to do is we're going to chat in general here, then get specific in the quiz, and I'm going to have you kind of follow my lead. So if we know the sample average is, is X bar, and the sample standard deviation is S, we can calculate those. You already did in, your, uh, in question number one there. We can create ranges of values by combining these two things. For example, if we do x bar minus s and x bar plus s, these will give us two values, the average minus the sample standard deviation and the average plus the sta sample standard deviation. That describes a range of values. I'm going to do this for you in a second here in the, uh, in the, in the video. That range is called one standard deviation. And I always apologize about this because it, this range of values is called one standard deviation. And then this little measure here is called the standard deviation. It's one of the things that really drives me insane about statisticians. They spend so much time naming things and then they name two related but different things the same thing. Yeah, we're stuck with it. So anyway, um, once you have values for your average and your standard deviation, then you can actually form this uh, range of values. Let's take a look at that next. Okay, my friends. So uh, from your quiz, I kind of eyeballed the frequencies um, on the graph, and I used the, the midpoints because the first range goes from 0 to 10, and then 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and so forth. So I just picked the, the middle values there. So uh, when I picked this, I got an average of about 43 years, and it looks like my standard deviation is about 18 uh, years. So 43 is my sample average, and my standard deviation of my sample is, uh, is 18. Okay, so far? So what I want to do now is I want to show you how to use these numbers to calculate that range, one standard deviation. Okay, so now we've got an average, we've got the sample standard deviation, we can now construct a range of values based on those two things. One standard deviation, and I put from mean in parentheses, because very often it's referred to as that. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take the average, of 43 and subtract the standard deviation and we're also going to take it and add. Now what we're doing here is we're creating two numbers. Let's take a look. So x bar is 43 years. I'm going to leave the years off just to make the math a little more obvious if that's okay. So we're going to take 43 minus 18 here and we're going to do 43 plus 18 here. And then we just do the subtraction. 43 minus 18 is 25 years. And 43 plus 18 is going to be 61 years. <clears throat> so what is that? Well, that's a range of ages. The lowest one is about 25 years. The highest one is about 61 years. What you're going to be looking at in this quiz is how much data in that distribution is between 25 years and 61 years. Let's do that next. Okay, my friends, so here is our, uh, our graph of our data. I'm going to use the graph instead of the, the, the data table because I think it's going to give us a, a much better kind of way to count what I'm about to count with you. I want to know how much data in this entire distribution. You can look over here and see there's about 727 data points. I want to know what chunk of it is within one standard deviation of the average. So I know I have to look at the data that's between 25 and 61 years of age. Now I'm going to start with 61. 61 is essentially this dividing line uh, over here between the bar that has 150 people in it, which is the 50 to 60 bar, and then the next bar over, which is the 60 to 70 bar. So technically, it would be a little bit to the right of that bar. The, the 25 bar is going to be straight down the middle of this bar here because that bar goes 20 to 30 
and 25 is right in the middle of it. Now, what does that mean? Well, what I want to know is, I want to know what chunk of the data is between those two bars I just drew. Now, three of the bars are clearly completely within that range. That 110, that 157, and that 150. So that gives me 417 data points that I know are between 25 and 61. How do I deal with these lines that are cutting the bars in pieces? Well, I think we can just kind of deal with it nicely mathematically. For example, the one that's cutting the 25 bar in half, let's just take half of that data and put it on one side in half and put it on the other. Since there's 115 data points, why don't we just say that that's 57? I mean, we could call it 57 and a half if you want to. You know what, what the hell? Let's call it 57 and a half because 57.5 would put exactly the same number on one side as the other. So now I've got 474 and a half data points so far. But now I gotta deal with that last little sliver over there on the right hand side, the one where we bumped it into 61. If I cut that 70 up, let's think about this. We gotta be a little bit clever here. That 61 is 10% of the way in, right? Because 61 is 10% of the way from 60 to 70. So why don't we take 10% of that 70, which would be seven, and add it. Now let me, let me check my math here. I got 110 plus 157 plus 150 plus 57 and a half plus seven. I got that as 481.5, but I'm gonna double check that in Google here. Now while I'm checking in Google, uh, looks like I'm, looks like, yep, spot on. Um, what I've shaded here is one standard deviation around the mean. And as it turns out with bell-shaped data, there's a somewhat predictable chunk of the data that should be there. Let's go back to the board one more time and take a look. Okay, so we just figured out how many data points are within one standard deviation from the mean. And we looked at, it is 481 and a half data points. There are 481 and a half data points between those two numbers that we, we set up as x bar minus s to x bar plus s. It's a range of values. So in the video, I was alluding to a chunk. What chunk of the data is that? Well, that's how many data points there are. But when we're talking about a chunk, it's almost like what proportion of the data. I mean, yeah, 481.5. But that doesn't tell us how much it makes up. I mean, you also have to know how many data points are in the data set. I need to go look at that again. I think it's 700 and, yep, 727. When you divide 481 by 727, you get about 66%, which tells me, us, that about two thirds of the data is within one standard de deviation of the mean. So if you think about the shape of the data, it's got that mound, that bell, and then it tails. So it's got that chunk in the middle, and then it tails off. If you put lines up, one standard deviation from the mean, roughly two thirds of all the data is gonna be clustered right in there. Okay, cool. What I want you to do next is to figure out what chunk, what proportion is within two standard deviations of the mean. So don't just go out one, 18 on either side, go out two, which would be 18 and 18 more, which would be 36 on either side, okay? So one standard deviation started at the average of 43 and then went out 18 and 18. Two standard deviations is gonna go out 18 and 18 more. So clearly it's gonna capture more data between those two numbers. Your job? figure out that percentage. And then I might even ask you to go three standard deviations and figure out what you get. Try that now.